Hi and welcome back to the probably last episode of my playthrough of Crusader King using the official solo rules that come with the game. The game could be over fairly soon because we need two more successful crusade actions in order to get into Jerusalem, which would all of them award the respective player the King of Jerusalem achievement, which I want, obviously. Uh, one thing to note is that Spain has two crusade cards in their deck. Um, I also decided to go with two. I already prepared all the decks, by the way. And yeah, I think with that being said, we should be pretty much ready to go. There were a lot of goofs during the last episode of the game. There were actually a lot of goofs throughout the whole series series actually. One thing that I was being made aware and thanks so much for that. Yes, um, I was thinking about when I think it was France who went after Burgundy. I think I had a pack with Burgundy back in the day and I was wondering do I get a Castle Spelly against France when they invade a territory which who I have a pack with and yes that's the case which is definitely good news. It doesn't really change a lot of things right now but maybe it could a little bit later so I would definitely put this crest on my politics track here accordingly. These are my hand or this is my hand of cards. Again, I have done that off camera. And I think with that being said, we should be pretty much good to go. I believe Spain Iberia is the starting player and they want to marry, I believe. And as no player has a castle spell against Iberia, he's going to marry his heir to the throne, Uraka, to Giscar of France. They will go for neutral territories with green tokens. So yeah, let's try to do that. Again, I'm definitely not paying against it. Their trade back is suboptimal, I would think. They really have a lot of red trade tokens brooding here. And the second one would be Lustful, which is a critical trade. It's red, it would be a fail, but in this case, being Lustful does help. So Iberia was successful in this case. So Giscar joins the ranks of Iberia here. And wow, this is really a huge genetic pool actually. And so yeah, let's also not forget to place a packed token into Normandy. Over to me, we have still Friedrich. He's our first born son. We had another son, forgot the name, but who had a green um, token. Unfortunately, they were murdered by think Italy? Pretty sure it was Italy. They kill people left and right in this game. And yeah, um, we could marry him to someone. And yes, there is still a good candidate down here in Dalmatia, exactly. Uh, the generous Agnes. And I think we are totally trying to marry Agnes. Do I want to pay something for this or not? Mm -mm -mm. I think not. I want to hold on to my money. I think I really need it. So let's see. And ooh, the imbecile trade kicks in. So we were not successful in this case. Now that's a bummer. But then it's over to Italy. They will go to the closest location. They have a daughter, Felicia. And yeah, daughter can't marry Agnes. So I think Melisende is out. So it's I think, yeah, it's the only candidate is Louis up here. That's the closest territory. So they will totally go for Louis in this case. But yeah, that's really bad news for the next generation in this house here. Basically, a lot of red tokens will get added to the trade back. But we may not see that in this playthrough anymore. I mean, we still have one more H token that they could take. So let's see what happens. Of course, the king could always die. But at least they have a pact now with Brittany. And I think that's it in respect to marriages. So France doesn't have any children or siblings or whatsoever. But as far as I understood the solar rules, they do not really care about their siblings, actually. Only their kings, queens or their children. Then let's plot. And I think we want to tax first. We give another child to Italy. We're getting used to that. And then I was really thinking of doing another plot overthrow. Again, I still try to overthrow the unrest token of Italy. And with the money here, we should be able to do that. So let's do that in this order, putting the tax card on top of things. On the other hand, now we don't know. I think let's not go for the crusade just yet, um, because I'm kind of hoping that one of the others, and really only one of the others, is now going through a crusade. And then I will do that with my very first action. But things could really turn sideways here. 
And of course, one thing I forgot, they had the divine marriage card. Mm, I think the next time you marry, your marriage attempt will automatically succeed. So we can basically get rid of this. So let's draw the action card for this round. And it's the crusade. Okay, that's really bad now. But then again, they need to be successful, right? I think they will send their newly wet spouse from Uraka. And yeah, I think let's do that. They could send the king though, because if the king dies, yeah, that's a point now. If he the king now dies, he gets a lot of green tokens in the back. I think he's sending the, the king. No, he has to send the king. So he's drawing two. I'm not paying against that. I don't have the money anyway. So here is the first one, a lunatic. Well, this can't be helpful actually. And second token is this and ooh. He was successful. He was actually successful. So another red trade into their bag, which means, ah, but yeah, I couldn't know. So we are putting this in here. So I could, ah, oh, this would be bad. Let's say, mm, I will come to that in a second. What do they get? One trade draw at invade and one success needed by invader. Poof, wow, that's a very, very powerful um, special ability here. They haven't surpassed Italy just yet. They are just, yeah, they're, they're equal basically. So we are not moving the Crusader token here. Definitely a bummer. And yeah, as for their card, um, it's basically the same thing, right? Save this card you may at any time to negate all effects of an event on an action card. Oh, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow, okay. That's huge, that's really huge. Do we have something here, Royal Guard? No, no, I think not, I think not. Over to us, we definitely need some money. We still have six mobilized territories. The bank doesn't kick in, unfortunately, which means we are simply getting six coins. Definitely not bad. We will make use of that for sure. Uh, it's six, right? Yeah, nothing else. Yeah, we have lost the other perk from Aleppo, I believe. And then, yeah, we are basically giving a child to Italy again, which shouldn't be that big of a deal. So let's see. We have Judita and Judita is chased. Okay, finally, some green tokens are entering their dynasty. Not too bad. And I think we might as well stay here because it's their turn. And again, if they're now drawing the crusade card, the game is over and it's not. It's a plot overthrow and I think they will manufacture a castle's belly against France again an adjacent player yes for sure so we are drawing two tokens um deceitful yeah that's a good one again we are plotting here this is a critical trade I'm not sure how often times they have drawn these I mean again they have two in the back but still it's always the first token they're drawing out of this back so yeah they were able to manufacture a castle's belly against France. We really didn't see a real fight actually in this game or war in this game, um, which is not too unusual. This is so this kind of a Cold War scenario in a lot of instances. Really the cards have to be right um, in order to invade another player. Going for these um, independent countries, that's really not a big thing, but really going into a war with another player, definitely a different thing. What's the event? Spouse poisoned. Your spouse is poisoned by an unknown culprits, by unknown culprits, and that he dies? What? If you have the court physician, you make a successful spouse is safe. We don't, and I think there are no special abilities here for them. So yeah, she's dead. Sibylla is dead, but yeah, okay, I guess not the end of the world. Yeah, I think, yeah, sorry for her, but not for the dynasty. He has two children, healthy children, actually, so I think they should be in a good shape. But that's basically the end of their turn. Then we are moving over to France, and we are really lucky it's not the crusade track, so we could actually make it. Okay, we have another plot overthrow. And in this case, um, they are going to manufacture a castle spelly against Spain. But I think again, I have forgotten the chancellor, but this time not too late at least. I kept forgetting this um, chancellor ability here. The start of their turn basically, or as a free bonus once per round, they can as a free action getting rid of a castle spelly against them. And again, Italy has one. So they're totally trying to do that now. So we are drawing two tokens out of the bag, right? In this case, 
I think it doesn't really say you can only do that once. So let's see. Mm -hmm. Humble, yeah. I think that's already good enough. So the castle sparry is gone already. So this chancellor can be really, really powerful, actually. Would be much better for the Spain player, for the Iberian player, actually, because he's so defensive. And now we are actually going for the castle spelly against Spain. And I think they get... You may attempt to remove one castle spell. You know, gives you an extra token when you attempt. So basically, they're drawing up to three tokens against Iberia here. No, that's not good enough. Yes, temperate. That is good enough. So, oh wow, France has now a castle spell against everyone, actually. But so far, doesn't really do them any good. And I believe the event is something we can ignore. Requires child. They don't have a child. Okay, that was that. Now we are leaving the card here. That's the end of the first turn, actually. Iberia is still the starting player because they were the ones who did a successful crusade action. So let's see what they do. And that's a build and develop. So I guess, yeah, they will totally go for another castle. Maybe, maybe they could make it to three castles, actually. And I believe in this case they will go for Navarra here. Right, that's the idea. So let's do that. First draw, do they get an extra draw for something? Spymaster, plate armor, royal guard? Nope, they don't get anything extra. So let's draw. And yeah, this is not good enough. Being deceitful doesn't really help you in this case. And that's basically their action. Let's see what the event says. The Royal Ball, that's the other. Injustices are forgiven and new bonds formed. Ah, fabulous Royal Ball. The next player, that's us, may choose to no longer be at war with another player or have a castle spelly against his dynasty removed. I think that's pretty perfect. No, that's amazing. We are totally removing the castle spelly against us from Italy. Wow, that was a very, very cool event. Back to us. Unfortunately, this is not a crusade card. It's plot overthrow. And again, the question is, do I want to spend the money here or not? I need one money now for upkeeping or for paying the upkeep for Hungary here. I definitely need one or two money for my trade check when I will go to a crusade action. If I go to a crusade action, I think I should. I definitely want one or two coins at least to counter something because if i'm successful with that crusade i think i should win the game actually let's do that so we are paying one in order to draw two tokens and we need two tokens here in order to be successful so i think i'm still okay and first one ah we are clever this is so amazing cool cool stuff which means I believe the unrest and the play goes away. The castle stays here. So the first player to go in there basically gets that castle for free. Wow, that's amazing. And they lost one victory point here. Oof, that is so cool. I believe the unrest goes away. Let me quickly check that. And yeah, not so sure actually. I think the plague stays here. I think it will should be on the outbreak oversight. So the next time someone is taxing there, we could remove it. Let's let's leave it at that right now. I think this would be the best take. And there was a good comment in respect of doing multiple plots basically. So in that same overthrow action, I could have done multiple overthrows. And the same is true for the other plot action. So you can bribe, you can murder, but for every extra attempt, not really attempt, but extra action you want to take as part of that's as a sub action of that plot card you have to pay one gold the next one is then two gold and so on and i think i'm totally fine and I, there are no other territories unrest on the board here anyway awesome let's check out the event which says trust for success next player's heir to the throne is tutored by the royal tailor the child gets the attractive trait i think they really need that and being attractive definitely does help when you are lustful so they're getting some more green tokens in here <laughs> definitely helpful then again we can stay here with italy they are next they will go for a mobilize invade, which should be a rather easy one because they will simply invade Sardinia here. So this is gone. And I think they will move there 
um, mobilization marker over to Sardinia as well. So from here they could go for other territories with their next card. So they got the victory point right back. So I'm even more happy that the overthrow was successful. And oh gosh, again, I just noticed it. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't successful. I'm pretty sure you were screaming, screaming at your screen. Yeah, we needed two successes. So let's let's redo that real quick again. Not the end of the world in this case. I will simply draw a second token here from the back. And in this case, yeah, I was kind. And I think in four, yeah, it definitely does help me. Okay, oof. good that I caught this. Don't want to cheat here. I'm okay doing mistakes, but I don't want to do mistakes in my favor, actually. That's <laughs> really where, especially in these solo kind of games, I truly hate that. Okay, so we have fixed that. Let's see what the event says. That's a crackdown. The next player may remove all unrest token from any territories under his control. If he does, he gains the cruel trade. However, the next player doesn't have anything. And there is no, it's basically really the next player. In this case, it doesn't go around the table until we find a player with an unrest marker. So we are simply ignoring this, but definitely not a bad card, especially for the Italian player here. Last but not least for this round, at least it's France again, and they will also go for a mobilize invade. And I think they're First priority is a territory with who they have a pact with, which in this case is the Low Countries. So yeah, let's totally do that. Let's see if I can find a horse. Let's add it in here. It's another victory point. Now, I think he has a castle here, so he will move the guy in here, actually. I think this does help him, actually. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's do the event. And again, no trade check was needed. They had a pact with them. And here's the theater troop. That's the other. A traveling theater troop comes to entertain the next player's court. If he pays them two gold, he gains the cultivated trade. If not, he gains the ignorant trade. Um, I think here we'll have to also make a meaningful decision. Next player is Spain. They typically don't have money. They are not caring about money, but we are simply saying they have independent amount of funds available. So he, we are saying he is paying that. So he gets the cultivated trade in the bag. Let's see if I can find that. Yeah, there it is. Sorry, it's taken me a while. So we are putting this into the trade bag of Iberia. And that's the end of the first round, actually. So yeah, a lot of things will happen. First of all, I will spend my money for my upkeep in Hungary. So we have taken care of this. Then we are adding H tokens. So here we have the fourth one. So another king who made it this far, which means we can remove a red trade token from the back. Let me quickly do that. And yeah, in this case, we are simply going for the weak one, a normal token in this instance. Yeah, that's really not bad for them. In France, nothing special happens, but here King Fernando dies. And I think he dies one round earlier because of a troublesome or stormy marriage, I think was <laughs> what they were referring to. So they are both dead, basically. So they are moving back up. And now we are adding three green tokens into the back of the Spain Spanish player that is truly insane actually um and i think for us we are simply adding a second h token to queen berta here yeah then we are moving into the second round we are trying to marry spain can't marry but we are totally going to try that but only with one token i'm not paying anything here we are trying to marry magnus to our club footed friedrich and again we are in this <laughs> We tried it once, she didn't fall for it. And I think the only one left, no, we have King Alfredo actually of Italy. He will simply marry now to, oh no, I think, hmm, I think he will go to the closest one. And I think in this case, he will totally go for Agnes. She's green, right, in the end. And in this case, again, we have to do meaningful decisions. So we're adding this to the trade back. So that was pretty cool. I think he removed a red one and is adding a green one now into the back that's pretty huge and he now has a pact with dalmatia of course oh wait a second wait a second of course he has to be successful first so let me redo that i'm not paying anything for that i think this was the generous token so oh, i keep forgetting this 
too much going on. So we are drawing two tokens, but I think he will be successful. I think no matter what. Yeah, he's clever. No worries in this case. So we're adding Generous back in here. So he married or she's now married to very old Umfredo actually. And yeah, we are also adding the pack token here to Dalmatia. And that's the end for the marriage step. I can still create a duchy now, but I do think we might end it here. So we are playing the crusade card on top because we are the second player. That's really <laughs> what matters now. And the mobilize invade goes as the second card as part of our plotting step. Still, Iberia is first. So let's see what they do. It's a mobilize invade. Hmm. For them, it's again a tricky one. Mm, but I do think they are going to invade because they would also be brought to six victory points. And this is, I really do think that this is a defensive move for them. So yeah, they will totally do that. So let's see, we are drawing two tokens. I'm not countering this. Ignorant. Nope, this doesn't help. I re re added three green tokens in that bag now. And yeah, too lustful. Yeah, they were not successful taking over Elvira. They, I think they also weren't able to uh, mobilize another one here. I'm not sure if it's round, down or up, but I think going after this territory here was the better deal for them. Relatively certain about that. Then we have, oh yeah, we know this one, or at least a similar one, Leprosy. Your king falls in with Leprosy, leading to eventual ugly lingering. Okay, are we getting the ugly trade? And we don't have the court physician, yes. So we have to, yeah, there is another ugly trade in here. So we are adding it into the bag, actually, and so they're also getting a different, I think they also got this last time. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And also take one H token. Now that's pretty, pretty brutal for them. But I think, and I really do hope that we can now end the game right here and there. So we are going for a crusade. We are sending Friedrich off to Jerusalem. We are totally paying two money here in order to, to get two extra trade draws. And now in a multiplayer game, players would definitely gang up on me now, obviously, to make sure I'm not making it there. I mean, that's really victory point and victory points are very, very tight in this game. So let's see. First draw. And that's the cruel one. That's all we need. He was amazingly successful, Friedrich, in that case which means we are adding the crest onto the kingdom of Jerusalem. We are also claiming the victory point, so the achievement here. We are placing it next to our territory for now because that's the end of the game right here, right now. We are no, not even triggering the event card anymore. The game is over. We are tallying up our victory points. And in this case, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for us. Italy has one, two, three, four, five, and six. Iberia has one, two, three, four, five. Nothing else. And yeah, France, but I, I think I cheated against France a little bit. Um, I have killed their king a little bit too prematurely, actually, but I'm not taking back. One, two, three, and four here. No one is controlling three castles right now, so this is not being um, assigned, which means I was, in fact, the winner of this game. Some words on this game. Again, the multiplayer mode is, I really love it. I, I really think it's an outstanding game. Hilarious narratives every now and then. Yes, you have to be somewhat resilient to <laughs> bad luck or you have to deal with that, that really bad things will happen to you. Sometimes even the other event that's typically good for you comes with a price. Let's take the demon child here for, for instance, which is Getting a child is normally a nice thing, but in this case, we would remove all pious tokens from their back. So you really have to live with a lot of frustration every now and then. Do they have a pious trait in here, actually? No, they don't. So they wouldn't be hit by that. So well, that's not the end of the world. But still, um, yeah, that's something that you have to deal with. It's really also this gang up on the leader. Also, but this is very typical for these kind of games, dudes on a map or so, where you have to really chase the leader down. So that's also something that does happen. And yeah, especially for these last tests here, making it to Jerusalem, for example, that's also something where, yeah, you see a lot of action against you. In this case, the I wasn't capable of doing this. And this is, I think now, mm, the solo mode works, I guess, nice, but I think 
in a lot of instances you have to overrule the things a little bit in order to make it work. Again, I'm not sure if I was now extremely lucky. I think I do because, for example, Italy, during one era or so, they weren't really able to play their war cards. And when I then discarded their remaining cards, all four cards that they still have were all mobilized in Vade. And this is where they play their strength, actually really going after those other players here. Maybe you don't really need the different characteristics. Maybe you should play them all aggressively or maybe at least too aggressive bonding not sure if if iberia is in any way helpful maybe you have to place them somewhere else maybe again was a lot of factors what yeah in the end changed the outcome of this game and definitely it's also on me i completely goofed up a lot of things Anyway, I still enjoyed it. For me, it was more the narrative experience now rather than feeling, hey, yeah, I have won. I, I really don't care in this case because, again, I was really able to put myself out here relatively easily and because no one was able to get after me or wanted to get after me because their flowchart said, let's go for the easy prey first here. Also, maybe something which you should then maybe incorporate in, in future places where you think, okay, now Italy should have gone for this, but Actually, they should go after me because they see I am winning, which a normal player would have done, I guess, in this case. But yeah, that's basically how you play Crusader Kings. I learned or relearned a lot about this game. I can totally like this game and also really enjoyed the solo mode here. I think it does work per se. And if you're playing it more often, I'm pretty sure you're coming up with some house ruling, you know how to steer the AI properly to make it even more of a challenge. But ultimately, it's really the fun of this game and the craziness of all of those events. And yeah, I really do like this game a lot. And yeah, with that being said, I think uh, Europe Universalis or Europa Universalis should actually arrive at my doorstep. I think they announced it by Monday, Tuesday. Today is Saturday when I'm recording this. And yeah, really curious to see how this goes. It comes also with the solo mode and you keep hearing good things. I that's a totally different game, I think, compared to Crusader Kings, which is a little bit more, let's call it even lighthearted fun, even though it's not a very trivial game, but still it's, it's a different kind of beast. But really very much looking forward to that. Um, I might do an unboxing or so, let's see if I find some time. As for a playthrough, this definitely will take me some time to get it to the table, learn the rules, and I will want to do... A, a multiplayer game before I really even dare to put it onto the channel here with the solo mode. But I think up next I have one or two, let's say somewhat lighter games, which also shouldn't take me as long as this one here. Also that will stay tuned, maybe less thematic, a little bit more Euro-ish the next one or two videos I'm doing. But yeah, keep an eye out and yeah, really hope to see you soon in that video before um, you're tuning out a huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members out there you guys are amazing if you want to support my little channel here you can join me on patreon you will find a link somewhere it will pop up during the video there's a link below in the description you can join me directly on youtube by clicking that join button or you can click the thanks button for a small or not so small donation donation like and subscribe leave a comment that also greatly greatly helps the channel and yeah now with that being said really hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and until then bye bye